All right, guys. So now we finished the number and algebra um, series of questions from the BM. We, we move on to the next chunky topic, which is the geometry topic. Again, as with the number and algebra, guys, these come up every single year. So it's really important that you're um, aware of the concepts and you're aware of how to answer some of these uh, difficult questions. But without further ado, guys, let's get straight on to the questions. So it says, uh, question 24, BMAT 2019. I remember, guys, this is actually quite a difficult one. This one, this one should have a star there. So let's just put that star there, actually. So this is a warning, guys. And then it says uh, a cross-country uh, running track uh, is in the shape of a regular pentagon. It says competitors run clockwise around the track when on the third leg uh, they're on the bearing of 110. What's the bearing they're on the first leg? So guys, pause the video, give yourself a minute, be sure to be back after that minute, and then we'll be going uh, through the solutions. Okay, guys, so welcome back. So let's do the one this diagram. So we know they run clockwise, that's fine. First, second, that's all going clockwise. Regular pentagon, we got that. And so when on the third leg, uh, which is this, when you start here, the bearing is 110. So remember, the way you do bearings, you draw a north line from that, and then you always go clockwise. So that is going to be 110, right? The next obvious thing, guys, to do in this kind of question, um, actually, before you even start, um, we, we need to work out what the bearing is on the first leg, isn't it? So the first leg starts here. So we draw a north line from there, right? And then we go clockwise around. So clockwise around there. So just by looking at that, guys, that's more than three quarters. And remember, three quarters is three lots of 90, which is 270 degrees. So that's clearly greater than 270, meaning we can knock out most of the options already without even doing much work. And um, yeah, so even if you even if you're scared by this question, guys, you don't, want to, don't know what to do in an exam situation, um, you can literally just give it a guess and you have a one in two chance of getting that one right. But the next obvious thing I have to do, if you want to do it the legit way, is um, work out the exterior angle. So what we mean by exterior angle is this angle here. So you draw, you, you continue on the line from one of the sides, and the angle it makes with the next side is the um, exterior angle. And the way you find the exterior angle, you just do 360 divided by the number of sides, which is 5 here. And then to work this out times top of bottom by 2, so 720 over 10. So that, guys, you're going to get 72. So this angle is 72. And since the... As you can see, the interior angle makes a straight line with the exterior angle. Um, the angle there for the interior angle is going to be 180 minus 72, which is basically 108. And all the interior angles are the same. But I want to focus on this interior angle, which is going to be 108. Right? Now, the next obvious thing to do, guys, just by looking at this, is obviously to work out this angle here. Because that then forms a circle, isn't it? And 30, uh, in a circle, the angles add up to 360. So 110 plus 108 is going to be 218. And you just do 360 minus that. And if you do that, uh, you'll get 42, 142. So you're going to get 142 here. Now, the next thing I'd like to do, guys, is draw another. This is a cheeky uh, uh, step. You draw another north line there. And then whenever you have this situation where you kind of have like two vertical lines like that, and that you're drawing them, and then you have one of them and you want to work out this other one, um, you can, th this is actually quite common in the BMI. You could use a technique where basically both the angles just have to add up to uh, 180. So if that one's 142, this one is going to be um, 38, I think. Yep, 38 is going to be the angle there, right? So hopefully um, that's all making sense, guys, so far. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is something super cheeky again. So this is kind of bent. So I'm kind of going to do that. The, the, another problem with this question, guys, is that the angle is so small, it's kind of easy to miss out some of the, some of the steps. But hopefully, guys, you can appreciate with this line over here, with the dotted line that this drew, that's a straight line. And we know that this one over here is 108. So if we do 38 plus 108, we're going to get 146, isn't it? So this cheeky angle that's lying in here right is just going to be um 180 minus 146 which is going to be 34 yeah it's going to be 34 and then you probably recall guys from gcse z angles so you have a nice z angle here again the angles are so small guys that it's really you could easily miss one of these so that one's going to be 34 and then that's part of a circle, isn't it? We're basically, the bearing we need to find plus 34 is part of a circle. So you just do 360 minus the 34. And that's going to give you um, 326, isn't it? Yeah, 326. And therefore, guys, hopefully you can appreciate then, in this beastly question, the answer is H. So hopefully, uh, this is a really difficult question, guys. In an exam situation, I'd have probably just um, uh, left this out and probably 
through that through that just estimation we made at the start, just guess and we have a one and two uh, chance of getting it right. But it's not worth, guys, uh, spending your, over a minute and losing a lot of other points um, just for this question. But either way, guys, uh, hopefully um, this question um, has made sense. If you have any comments or perhaps you might have an easy way of doing it, just comment down below and we can go through that. But other than that, guys, see you in the next video. All right, guys. So previously, we were looking at this really beastly question, VMA 2019, question 24. And again, it's towards the end of the paper, so you can kind of expect you're going to get one of these nasty questions. But either way, guys, hopefully uh, my explanation has made a lot of sense and you managed to gain a lot of points and learning points from that. But now, guys, we move on to the next question, VMA 2017, question 12. This is in triangle PRS. So we have um, PRS. Um, line QT is parallel to um, RS and it says RS is that uh, centimeters TS and QT and those are annotated in the diagram and it says what's the length of PS so guys pause the video give yourself a minute be sure to be back after that minute where we're going to go over the solution okay guys so welcome back so what they want us to do in this question um, is to work out this length over here um, P to S. So this is really testing our, our, our knowledge guys on uh, congruency basically similar triangles so if I draw the uh, triangle PRS, the big triangle, we're going to get something like this. So that's going to be P and R and S. And then if I call now, guys, this side X, I'm going to call this side X for the time being. Uh, P to S will be 1.8 plus X and R to S, we know it's 1.5. Then if we get the smaller triangle over here, which is basically the same as that, but just shrunk down, we have now uh, PT, so it's gonna, this is going to be PTQ, PT is going to be X, and this is going to be uh, 0 0.3, right? And then obviously QT and RS are the same thing, or they match basically in terms of congruency, and this and this match. So that basically means that, um, obviously to get from here to here, you just times by a, times by a scale factor, a question mark that's going to be the same question mark so the scale factor for rs to qt is going to be 1.5 divided by 0 0.3 and the scale factor um between ts and pt which is going to be the same as that score uh, 1.5 over 0 0.3 that's going to be 1.8 plus x over x right and then if you just do some rearranging here so 1.5 divided by 0 0.3 that would go in five times so 5 equals 1.8 plus x over x. And just solving for this, 5x equals 1.8 plus x. 4x equals 1.8. And then x is just 1.8 halved, which is 0 0.9. And then halve, it, halve that again, which is going to be 0 0.45. Therefore, guys, the answer, hopefully you can understand then, that the answer here would be C. So hopefully, guys, I hope that question has made a lot of sense. And as always, really look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, guys, so previously we were looking at this question, BMAT 2017, question 12, um, which do with congruency. Hopefully, guys, if you didn't practice this topic before, hopefully um, it's bringing back um, memories of when you did do this topic of congruency. Uh, either way, guys, I hope you uh, learned a lot from this question. It's really a good question to go back to that um, topic of congruency. But without further ado, guys, let's move on to the next, uh, BMAT 2016, question 16. So it says... Um, uh, the diagram shows quadrilateral PQRS. It says, given that tan theta is 4 over 3, uh, what's the area of the quadrilateral uh, PQRS? So, guys, pause the video. Give yourself a minute. Be sure to be back after that minute where we're, we're going to um, go over this question. Okay, guys, welcome back. So, let's go through this. So, we know that tan theta is 4 over 3. And really, the, the, the place where you see this kind of stuff, um, this is really referring to Sokotoa, the place you really see this, this kind of stuff is in a right angle triangle. So you need to form a right angle triangle here. So right there. And then you obviously have your nice right angle there. And re remember Sokotoa. So so, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan equals opposite over adjacent. Right. So then according to that angle, this is the opposite. This is the adjacent then, and that's the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is just the side opposite the right angle. So, boom. Right, and the opposite is the one opposite the angle you're considering, and the adjacent is just the one that's left over, right? And then we know that tan theta is um, opposite over adjacent, so that must mean the 4 must be the opposite, and the 3 must be um, the adjacent. Um, okay, so we know, we, we know that so far, but according to the diagram, right, According to the diagram, um, this side is 5, right? So you would think, for example, the opposite then was 4, and this was 3, isn't it? So then when you do tan theta, you're going to get opposite, which is 4, over adjacent, which is 3. But just by looking at this, 
this length over here we, uh, is is definitely far greater than the five over here. And if we use that, that's suggesting that that's four and that's five, which can't be the case. So this is actually a trick. The likelihood is that it's actually, this is probably eight, right? And then this is um, likely six. And if you do opposite over adjacent with eight over six, you basically end up with four over three anyway, because it's just more of a ratio thing. Whereas we know for, for a fact it can't be three times. You know it can't be 12 because that length is definitely not greater than PS, which is 11. So we know it can't be 12. So it must be eight and six. Okay. Um, so we know that. So this is just basically a compound shape. So you could work out the area of the triangle, which is going to be base times height divided by two. So six times eight over two. So that's going to be 6, 12, 24, and then double that, 48 divided by 2, which is going to be 24, right? So we have that, and then we, we, we can just work out what the area is uh, then of that um, rectangle. So if that length, if the adjacent is 6, so if from here to here it's 6, the leftover part must be 5. So this must be 5. Actually, we kind of already knew that from, from above. And this really just um, consolidates the idea that that length must have been 6. And then since these two sides are basically opposite each other this is going to be eight then so the area of that rectangle is just going to be 40 and since this is a compound shape you just have to add the areas together you do the 24 plus the 40 and then you're going to get 64 so hopefully guys you can appreciate that in this question the answer would be there for uh, c so again uh, really hope that was useful guys going over this idea of compound shapes and circle toe revisiting those topics and as always guys we look forward to seeing you in the next video all right, guys, so previously looked at this question, BMAT 2016, question 16, um, really visiting the topics of soccer toa, compound shapes, and that sort of jazz. But hopefully, guys, that question has made a load of sense. But now, guys, we move on to the next question, BMAT 2015, question 8. It says PQR is an isosceles triangle, which PQ equals PR, which is 6, and QR is 8. It says, what's the value of tangent uh, of angle PQR? So, guys, pause the video, give yourself a minute, be sure to be back after that minute, and then we'll be going through the solution. Okay, guys, so with these kind of geometry questions or most geometry questions, as you've seen in the previous questions as well, it's really important that you draw out what's going on so you can really visualize and solve the problem uh, much more easily. So here we have an isosceles triangle. So let's first uh, start by drawing that. So let's just say somewhat like this. All right. And then in this um, isosceles triangle, um, we have its P, Q and R. And we know P, Q and P, R is both six. And the remaining one, QR, is 8. And they want us to work at the angle of angle. They want to work at the tangent of angle PQR, so PQR. So that's going to be this one here. So PQR. Yeah. So the so when you want to work at tangents, um, uh, like obviously that you you know that there, there's rules out there when you when you don't uh, have to really work with. Uh, I think it yeah there, there were I remember they were rules. Uh, where you can use, where you don't have to work with right angle triangles, but most of those rules for like the sine rule, um, the cos rule, and the tan rule, uh, most of those, if not all of those, basically require a calculator. And obviously you don't have access to a calculator in the BMAT. So whenever you see them trying to ask you to work out tan of something, sine of something, cos of something, it's all gonna be centered around a right angle triangle. So from this, we need to create a right angle triangle. And I can do that by splitting the triangle around the middle in half, get right angle, and this side is going to be basically half, isn't it? It's going to be four. And then obviously this, that's six. And um, if we really wanted to, I can work out um, what this remaining uh, side over there is by using Pythagoras. Because uh, remember, um, so if I just call this x, so I can just say x squared plus four squared equals uh, six. Or alternatively, x is just, and then rearrange and find x. Or basically, x is just going to be the square root of six squared, so the bigger side squared. But, um, but since it's not the bigger side, now I have to do minus the other side, so 4 squared, and then square root that. So that's going to be the square root of 36 minus 16, right, which is going to be the square root of uh, 20, which is the square root of 5, square root of 4, which is 2 root 5, basically. So that's going to be 2, this guy over here is going to be 2 root 5. And then obviously what we know is that tan theta then, tan theta is going to be opposite. So the side opposite is going to be this. Uh, hypotenuse is going to be the side opposite of the right angle, and the adjacent is the other side. So tan theta is going to be opposite, which is 2 root 5, over adjacent, which is 4. And then if I just do a bit of clearing up, that's going to come 1, and that's going to come 2. So divide top and bottom by 2. So therefore, you get root 5 over 2. And therefore, guys, the answer in this case uh, would be uh, E. So again, guys, hopefully that has made a lot of sense. And as always, really look forward to seeing you in the next video.
Okay, guys, so previously we were looking at BMAT 2015, uh, question 8, this question, uh, again, to do with um, working out tan of this angle. Again, really talking about the topic of Sokotoa. Remember, guys, whenever you see this word tan, sine, or cos, you should immediately be thinking Sokotoa because you don't have a calculator, and therefore the likelihood is that you can't use um, the other rules. But now, guys, we move on um, to the next question, BMAT 2014. It says the diagram shows part of a glass structure, PQ, um, P. QRS uh, is a horizontal square with size of one meter and X is four meters vertically above P. And then it says, what is the cosine of the angle that XR um, makes with the horizontal? So guys, pause the video, give yourself a minute, be sure to be back after that minute and then we're gonna go over the solution. Okay guys, so welcome back. This is, what's the cosine of the angle XR? So XR is this guy here. Whoops, mind my... Um, uh, mind my uh, dodgy looking line and it says mix with the horizontal and then a horizontal is basically going to be the base isn't it but what i'm going to do guys is make the horizontal this and you're going to see why i do that and also draw in this line so do you see guys uh, that's basically a right angle triangle isn't it well i've basically drawn there um that's a right angle triangle and now i can use much simpler rules uh pythagoras uh, we can use a bit of uh sakatoa um Again, because it's, cause it's talking about what's the cosine of that angle, again, when it always looks at what's the cos, tan, or sine, you should immediately be thinking right angle triangles and um, Sokotoa. So now uh, we need to work out essentially what this angle is, right? And we know the base uh, is a, uh, a square, and all of them are one meter, one meter, one meter. Therefore, the remaining side, we have another right angle there, right angle triangle there. So therefore, the other side, I can just use uh, Pythagoras. But now, since we're using, we're working out what the hypotenuse is, we're going to do square root of one side squared, but rather than minus, is going to be the other side squared plus the other side squared. So it's going to be square root of two uh, when we do that. Therefore, that angle over there is going to be, that side, sorry, is going to be the square root of two. And, you know, um, x is four meters vertically above p. So px must be four then. Um, and then we need to cut what cos is, isn't it? So uh, remember, cos, and let's just call this angle uh, theta. So cos theta, right, is going to be Sokotoa. So remember, uh, ka, so you're going to have adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So this is the opposite then. That's going to be hypotenuse, and that's going to be the adjacent, right? So we need the hypotenuse, and we don't have that. But we have the other two sides. Therefore, we can just use Pythagoras. Again, so we can use Pythagoras as a square root. And since we're working at the hypotenuse, this can be one side squared plus the other side squared. So root two squared is just going to be two. And therefore you get square root of um, 16 plus two, which is going to be 18. So root 18, and then just square this off. And that's going to be root nine, root two, root nine, root two, and root nine is three. So it's going to be three root two. So this one over here is three root two. Um, and therefore that means then that cos theta is going to be the adjacent, which is root two over the hypotenuse, which is three root two. And then root two, root two cancels out. And therefore, guys, you're left with essentially one third, isn't it? So hopefully, guys, you can appreciate then Then the answer here would therefore be A. So as always, guys, I really hope that has made sense. And as every, uh, as I say every time, guys, I really look forward to seeing you in the next video.